Hello and welcome fellow Wasteland Survivors, I'm Dean. In today's video on Dude, Where's My Camp? Part 5, we're going to see how you can 100% protect your open world extractor. Now as most of us are painfully aware these days, it's extremely difficult to take and hold a workbench. There are so many griefers out there that are just trolling around waiting for the opportunity to kill us once we've taken a workbench. Because of that, a lot of us have resorted to using open world veins and extractors to get our resources. But that doesn't mean that they're still not vulnerable. Players can come by, pick the lock, friends that are on your team can help themselves to your resources anytime they want, and those pesky NPCs that are always showing up and blowing up our items. So hopefully with today's tips and tricks you can see how you can protect your open world extractor, get the resources, and play the game worry free. <laughs> Today's camp location is slightly north and a little bit west of Hemlock Holes. We chose this location because it has an acid vein on it. Ammo is in high demand and we need a lot of acid to convert lead ore into lead scrap so that we can craft ammo. Also it's not too far away from Hemlock Holes which has a workbench and in that location there's another three acid veins. So depending upon what server we're on we may be able to take and hold hemlock holes while we're on and playing. With those three locations and the location we've got we can get a lot of acid. Also keep this in mind there is another acid vein a little bit south and a little west of hemlock holes. But the land there or the terrain is pretty brutal to build on. There's a lot of enemies around and you're always under attack. In this location we hardly ever see any enemies and if we do they're extremely low level. Alright the first thing that we're gonna do is line a concrete foundation up to the front of our extractor. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a two by two room around the extractor and there is several ways that you can do this. We're doing it this way because we're going to add in two water purifiers and a fusion core generator in this 2x2 two two room. So if you weren't wanting to add those objects in, you could actually offset this foundation to the right or the left one half the width of the foundation. Like I said, there's several ways to do this. So I really hope you kind of play around with this a little bit and try a few different variables of this build. Now once we've got it lined up, what we need to do is back it away from the extractor about the thickness of a wall. We're going to want a wall to go across the front of the extractor. Now we can grab another foundation and it will snap into the extractor. Believe it or not, you can actually cover the extractor completely with a foundation. Now we're not going to see it in today's video, but we might make a future video on that. Now since our room is 2 by 2 we're checking the other floor or foundation to see how it's fitting into the terrain. It's a little bit too low and sinking down into the dirt. So we're going to go back to our marker and we're going to lift it up about two floor thicknesses and hopefully that'll get us up out of the dirt a little bit. Like I said, we're going to add in two water purifiers and we're going to want to make sure that our floor is above the water purifier. Now we can go ahead and snap our foundations in take our marker out and let's see if we're up out of the dirt enough. <coughs> Excuse me. I think we are. That looks pretty good. Alright, now before we continue, the next thing we need to do is put up a couple of walls and make sure we're not colliding with the side of the extractor. 
This is extremely important to do this a few times while you're building. That way, if you're too close, you don't have to tear your whole build down to move your foundation over a little bit to get a wall on. All right, since everything is looking good, let's move our foundations that are in the extractor out of the way. That way we can bring our water purifiers over and get them placed in. But before we do that, we need to go over to our marker and try to get a general idea of how tall it is. And we'll use the railings of the extractor to do that. What we have to do is make sure that our water purifier is not sticking up and above the height of our foundation. Now we'll bring it over and we're able to place this right up against the side of the extractor. We're going to use the corner and the edge to line it up. We really need to get this as close to the extractor as you possibly can. Two water purifiers side by side are a little bit wider than a foundation. Therefore, we got to get them close so that we're not having problems with putting walls up. Also, we want to check to make sure the water purifier or the concrete part is lower than the top of the floor. If it's sticking up above the top of the floor, we cannot snap these concrete foundations in. And it looks like it's working just perfect. Now we can grab our other water purifier and bring it over and put it beside it. Once again, it's really important to get these as close to one another as you possibly can. There's really not a lot of room or play. You've got to really get these pretty close. And once we do that, we can take our marker over and see if we can snap them into the water purifiers. And we can. Now, if the concrete part of the water purifier was taller than the top of the foundation, you wouldn't be able to snap a foundation in. So remember, it has to be a little lower than the foundation. Also, we're checking to see if our walls are going to go in. And they're going in just fine. Also, since we're this far, we can go ahead and put the rest of our walls up. And we'll put some over here on the side where the stairs are at. And we'll also put one on in the front. And there we go. All right, now we are not going to put our walls up in the back yet because we need to put our fusion core generator in. Now, before you put the generator in, please have everything else just perfect. The reason is, is because the fusion core generator sinks down into the foundation. And if you have to pull a foundation out, you can't put it back in because it says it's colliding with the pre-existing object. So it's important to have everything just right before you put the generator in. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a two by two room with foundations and our resources in. That looks really good. There's a lot of objects in here and they just fit so nicely if you adjust this just right. Now there's still one wall to go in but we're gonna put a door in there. But before we do that we need to add in some electrical. Now really you can do this any way that you want. You could just put a couple of electrical conduits up, connect it up to the generator and your water purifiers, and you're done. But we're going to put in some of these conduits. I'm going to put these in because we're going to actually put a keypad door in to the front of this. And I'd like the power to run over here to where we're at right now to power that door. Also, I'm going to take a second to line this upright up. Now, the only reason the upright is here is so that we can snap some conduits to the top of it. Once we get these conduits in, we'll take the upright out, and it'll just be these conduits running along the top or of the wall or by the ceiling. Now we can add in a junction right here. That way we can hook up our water purifiers. And like I said, ladies and gentlemen, you can really put the power in here any way that you want. 
this is just one of the ways that I do it. And we'll put our, uh, or connect our water purifiers up to that. And then we'll take a second here and add in a few more of these conduits. We're just working our way over to the generator. That way we can hook it up and everything looks nice and tidy to match the rest of our room. We'll put a connector on the end, connect our generator to it, but before we do that, let's take our upright out so we can put a connector on this end as well. Now you can take the upright out. It doesn't have to be there for support. And as a matter of fact, ladies and gentlemen, on the screen somewhere is a link to another video, Tips and Tricks, of electrical all about conduits. It's got some pretty cool little ideas on there and you might be interested in checking that video out. It shows several things you can build with these conduits other than using them for electricity. And you can see because we use them, we don't have a lot of wires running everywhere. And it helps keep our build looking very clean and very nice. All right, now let's go ahead and put a couple of more foundations up. The reason we're doing this is because we're going to use a keypad door. And we want the keypad to face out. If we didn't put these foundations up, we wouldn't be able to make the keypad face out. It would be facing on the inside. Also, I'm going to move this wall in front of our extractor, uh, face it a different way so that it matches up with the keypad door, uh, the, the surface of it, where it's white. Um, later on, when I completed this build, I put some wallpaper up. and you, I don't know why you don't have wallpaper for the keypad door, but they don't. So it still looked weird, but I was able to put wallpaper up so it matched everything else. Also, don't forget to write your code down. As a pro tip, somewhere in your build, usually behind a dresser, put use the little numbers and put your keypad number on that dresser on the back. Slide it up against the wall where nobody can see it. And then if you ever forget your code, you can always pull your dresser out, look at it, put it back. All right, now, on one side of our extractor or our build, you can still target it, and people could pick it or access your uh, resource that you're farming. So what you're going to need to do with the way that we built this one is put a couple of more foundations up. Now, you could use this for a lot of different ways. You could continue your build out from this, or you could use it like for workbenches or whatever, but this will completely and totally hide your entire extractor. And the only way into it is through the door once you get the roof on. All right, now to complete our door, we're going to hook the power up to the blue switch of the door. We're going to take out a power connector, <coughs> excuse me, place it on the door, and we want to make sure that it's not too high up because if you're putting a floor above it or a roof, it may collide with that. Connect that power conduit to the door. We're going to get out a pressure plate, and we're going to put that down in front of the door. We're going to connect the pressure plate to the electrical conduit and to power. Now, in case you guys or gals don't have the plans for the door or the pressure plate, there's still another way to do this. It's pretty simple. Just put a wall up. Then all you have to do when you want to enter the room is go into work mode, change the variance of the wall to a door, go in, collect your resources, go out, go back into work mode, and change the variance back to a wall and you would have a complete solid wall that nobody would even know there's another room in there. Now, since we've got everything done, it's important to test it to make sure everything's working correctly. So we tested our keypad to make sure we can come in. We collected our resources, walked on the pressure plate, the door opens, and then it closes behind us. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. We got a pretty sweet and simple build to completely hide 
all of your resources. And even if you have friends on your team, like I have right now, once we enclose this in with a roof or other floors, they can't even access this unless you give them the code uh, because they can't destroy your base or um, change or move any objects even in work mode. This is fully 100% protected. Now there is a couple of critters in the game that might get in there. Mole rats. But it's highly unlikely and they're just probably going to chew on the wall on the outside. But the brick walls are pretty tough and they can handle a lot of damage before they break. But realistically, no other players or even friends can get in there. Now, this is the build completed. And I'm just kind of showing you guys and gals real quick what it looks like once it has been completed. It looks really nice. It's easy to access. And once again, like I just said, you don't even have to use the door. You can just put a regular wall up and then just change the variance to a door do your business and then leave. Also what's really nice about this area is there's a little bit of room here and you can use it as a safe room in case you've got a friend who wants to leave some items while he swaps characters and moves, moves it to another character or you're trying to do a trade and you don't want other people getting into your business. All right, now there's one more thing I'd like to show real quick before we leave, and that is what you can expect to see on the next video, the tips and tricks, or electrical tips and tricks. If you notice, we've got a lot of lights up, and they're working. Now it is daytime, and it's a little hard to see, but you can see that the lights are working. But what you can't see is electrical wiring and electrical conduits. There are no visible electrical conduits in this entire build. The reason is, is because they are hidden inside of the walls. And I'll change this wall into a door, um, this wall too, so that way you guys and gals can see the wires that are running through the wall. So in the next video, I'm going to show and explain how you can do this in your settlement. Well, I hope today's tips and tricks help you out, give you a few good ideas on what you can do to secure your extractors and keep these damn griefers at bay. Really is annoying how bad this has gotten in the game. Uh, a guy or gal cannot hardly go to a workbench and get anything or do anything without some ass coming along and killing you. He doesn't even want the resources, he just wants to come and grief you because he thinks he's cool or whatever, I don't know. Alright ladies and gentlemen, thank you all very much for stopping in and hanging out with me. Uh, I really hope these tips and tricks helped you out. And just like always, until next time, please stay safe and peace. <music>